Mark chapter 14. After two days was the feast of the Passover, the unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft, and craftiness. What's, they've been trying to get him with questions and put him to death. Now, you know, they've talked about destroying him. They're putting him to death. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And then this feast is one of the three feasts that all the men, all the males would appear before the Lord. So there's a vast population of people and we're not going to do it this time. And they're people fearers. And when you fear people rather than God, you'll do all kinds of crazy things. And being Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she break the box and poured it on his head. The best thing that she's had. The only thing that she's had that of value. She breaks it for the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's many things spoken about in the law that were broken. They were crushed. And there were some that had indignation within themselves. They couldn't show it outward. And said, finally spoke, why was this waste? Of the ointment made. For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. No. Here's your Democrat. Give it to the poor. 300 pence, according to the Bible and the gospel, that's a, almost a year's wages. That's a lot of money she gave. She gave a year's wages to the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone speaks up and said, that's a waste. What, 300 uh, pence? No. Doing it for Jesus. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why troubles her? She has wrought a good work on me. That wrought a good work on me retaliates the waste. That was said. It's a good work wrought on Jesus. It's not a waste. What people think you do for Jesus is a waste. God will count it for a good work. For I have the poor. For ye have the poor with you always. That's a bold statement against socialism and communism. There will be always poor people. That's God who created all men. There are poor people today. And whensoever ye, ye will. Yeah. Whensoever ye will ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. Again, he's prophesying, I'm going away. Acts chapter 1. She has done what she could. She has come afore to anoint my body to the burial, telling of his death and burial. Prophesying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world. Jesus already knew Mark would be called a gospel. Matthew would be a gospel. And he says, when this gospel is read, this woman will be mentioned. How many times has this woman been mentioned? And reading your Bible all the way through. The messages in churches. Every church, every pastor, every evangelist, every missionary, every person should always at least once mention this woman in, in, your, in your lifetime, according to Jesus Christ. Because she had the best of all the things she's had, and she gave it to Jesus. And some people will say that's a waste. Very anti worth soever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world. This also that she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial for us. So we're speaking of Mary of Bethany. Less than 2,000 years later. We're still giving her credit for what she's done for the Lord. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve. Went unto the chief priests, follow the verse 1 in this chapter, and to, to betray him unto them. 
And we read later on in one of the Gospels that this was Judas that got upset. Whatever account that Mary, that we're going to talk about here, she takes this ointment, and it's costly. She pours it over the head of Jesus, and this inflames Judas to go out and betray him. Come on. Now, and this message is, is always just, there had to have been something about this ointment that could have gone for the poor. It could have been so, that so enraged Judas to make him go, okay, that's it. I'm selling them out. Tired of this. And you got to ask yourself, what was it with this ointment that broke the straw of the camel's back for Judas? Yeah, and then John says that, that exactly that. But would it really get you so angry if somebody took some... Think about... A year's salary? Yeah, but I mean, for Judas, this thing inflamed him. It wasn't even his, it was hers. And she could take it and go give to the poor. How much is he giving to the poor? <laughs> Nothing. This was, This is what... I'm trying to say, this thing that's recorded is what inflamed Judas. What I'm thinking is, He's mad because she didn't give it to as an offering to the disciples. That could for be them, it. For them to sell, to live on. That could be too. Because they were poor. They had no place. They went about here and there. Instead, instead of just cracking it open and dumping it on his head, that probably made him mad. Yeah. Because it was worth so much. And that's a possibility. But whatever it is, and that's a great possibility. Whatever it is, complaining a couple chapters ago that they didn't have money to buy bread. Yeah. They only had so many guns, so how are they going to buy the bread from the poor? And the thing, well, another, well, the story is too here. What comes up next is they've got the money because he sends them off to a man to go start go have the feast. Yeah. Prepares the feast. The treasurer took off. And when they heard it, the chief priests heard it. They were glad. <laughs> you see the condition in this country? They've been looking for, they've been holding councils after councils, trying to trick this guy, looking for that right opportunity. And it walks up to them. It says, hi. Can you imagine what that, and as the Bible never records that conversation. This is the 30 pieces of silver. How could Jews just walk up to him and say, hi, you want them? Give me some money, I'll give them to you. I wonder how the ones Mark and Matthew have found out even how much pieces of silver Judas got. The Holy Spirit would reveal that mm -hmm. to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. He sought how he might conveniently, that's a, that's a modern word, mm -hmm. betray him. So it's not, right now, it's not no time. Judas has betrayed Jesus, but he doesn't know when it's going to happen yet. And the, verse 1 tells it they're fearing all the people, so it has to be a time when Jesus is alone. That's kind of hard. This guy's got multitudes and multitudes of people always around him. In the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, where wilt thou where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? This is a Jewish feast, this is a Jewish time, Lord, we gotta go. And he sent them forth two of his disciples, doesn't say who, and saith unto him, Go ye into the city, Jerusalem, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water, follow him. Jesus leaves this great details. There's, there's, there's a, a colt. It's over by two ways. The men are going to stop you and say, what are you doing? And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house. There's a man bearing a pitcher of water. Just follow him till, you, till he gets in the house then speak. The master, there he goes that word again. Remember Mark is about the servant. Yeah, but look at that word show up in Mark about the servant. The master, Jesus, saith, 
Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared there make ready for us. It's all prepared. It's the busiest time of the year for Jerusalem. This is the New Year's of Jerusalem. This is the this is the time that Israel came out of Exodus. This is Abed. And they find one guy who still got room and a place for them to be. They couldn't find room when Jesus was born. But they can find room when he's going to die. And in the evening, he cometh with the twelve, after six o'clock. And as he sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. You know that? You know the heads picked up at the table on that one. You wonder what happened? You wonder what Judas did? He said, shall betray me. So it hasn't happened yet. Judas can pull out at any time right now. He could have walked up to Jesus and said, Lord, remember that guy you said was going to betray you? Yes, Judas. I've set the ball in motion. It's me. I'm sorry. I don't want to go through with it. You think Jesus would say, no, you can't. you got to be condemned to hell forever? No. God would have found somebody else. So when he says, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me, that may be an invitation for Judas to come forward and repent. Because there's only one there. And Judas knows it's him. No one else does. And there are church messages, whoever be the preacher, or the guest preacher, whatever. They'll be preaching a message, you're like, what? And it's preaching to one person in the congregation. And that person knows who they are. And what is that message of the Holy Spirit being preached to that congregation? When it wants to come forth and get right. And they began to be sorrowful and to say unto him, Jesus, one by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And the answer said unto them, no answer from Judas. It is one of the twelve. One of the twelve. Every time Judas is mentioned, one of the twelve. One of the twelve. One in twelve is thirteen. One of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. That would be the sop he mentions. He's now, he has given Judas, verse 18, a chance to repent. He is now giving warning to Judas before judgment will fall upon him. This is twice really he wants Judas to come forth and get right. That's what he's doing. Remember Naboth when he had the gold and the Babylonian garment? You know how many different relatives they went through before it came to you know any time because was it was judah whatever whatever tribe he was okay this tribe neighbor could say hey wait a minute just stop this it's my fault i did it and god would have done something for him to repent and get right no this family this family this family acre, acre. valley acre acre aiken after he got stoned he was aiken that's how i remember so with me in the dish, and the Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him. The Gospel. Christ died according to the Scriptures. There's the Gospel, the first part, before the Gospel even happens. Jesus said, what I'm going to do is scriptural. I'm trying to find that note I got here. Isaiah 53, Daniel 9, Zechariah 13. But watch this. But woe to that man. Man, he's preaching right at Judas without mentioning his name. By whom the Son of Man is betrayed. 
Judas, it's coming down the end of your time. You better get right, Aiken. Good were it for that man if he had never been born and Judas is part of the Antichrist, the Satanic Trinity, and he was born. Did you get that? No. Jesus stresses two births in the Bible. John the Baptist, the greatest of all men to ever be born, and he mentions Judas being born. And as they did eat, no repentance. No one came forward. Let's get back to dinner. So, fellowship dinners to invite your saved people, I mean, your unsaved people come out, your relatives and all that, who never trust Christ, doesn't usually work. They just get on with the mess and start eating. Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and he gave to them and said take eat this is my body now that was literal you know right there 22.2 .2, peter was spoken up say hey that ain't your body they know it's symbolic they've been following jesus for 14 chapters with parable with types with similitudes the sower goes out and sows the seed, but sees the word. The terrors are the, uh, the the unsaved in the world. The enemy is Satan. The fire, you know. He took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it unto them, and they all drank of it. The cup. He said unto them, "This is the cup. This is the cup. My blood of the New Testament, death." You see how many times now he has referenced the death, burial, and resurrection, and I'm going away. He doesn't say that this is the Last Supper. I know we call it that. But he's telling them. But there are other suppers. He sits down with them, has fish at the seaside. He sits down and has honeycomb with them in the other place. New Testament. you got to die to have a testament. Which is shed for many. So this is not the New Testament yet. According to Mark 14. The Gospels are not the New Testament. Until after Christ dies. Then that begins the New Testament. A lawyer would have a field day. You call Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. A, a, God, a, a, a New Testament. They could take you to court. And they can fight and win in a courtroom that testament begins after the death of somebody matthew mark and luke and john is a biography the life of jesus christ with the final chapters the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ very i say unto you i will drink no more of the fruit of the vine Grape juice, no intoxicating liquor, until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God, the millennium. Jesus is going to have grape juice in the millennium. How's that? And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. He's already had one betray him. One in the act of betraying him. Now he's telling the eleven, you're going to leave me. For it is written, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. Another scripture. But after that, After my death, I am risen. Notice the present tense, though he has not died and he has not risen. I am risen. I will go before you in, into Galilee. I'll, I'll, when, I, when I die and come back to life, I'll be there for you. And I believe that's what the angels tell Mary. Go tell him, and before you even get there, he'll show up for you. But Peter said unto him, 
Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Brave Peter. He loves the Lord. Jesus said unto him. Now Peter there, he's trying to defy the Bible. Because Jesus said, it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. And Peter steps up and says, oh, no, 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 I'm going to break the scripture. Peter, you can't break the scripture. It says you're going to be scattered. And when it says you're going to be scattered, you'll be scattered. I don't care what you say. It's got to be fulfilled. Verily I say to you that this day, even in this night, all before 6 a.m., when the cock crows, before the cock crew twice, thou shalt deny me thrice, three times. But I spanked the more vehemently, but he spanked more, the more vehemently that I should die with thee. I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise, also said they all. He got them all going with a great zeal. And sometimes open your mouth will cause others to follow, and it's not the proper thing to do. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit ye here. While I shall pray. Gethsemane is an oil press. An olive yard. And he taketh with him Peter, James, and John. So he, the eleven, he sits down. He takes three of them. And began to be sore amazed. And to be very heavily. He said to him, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. Come on, strong Peter. Jesus just told you he's weary. He's sorrowful. He's going to die. He needs a prayer partner. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground. And prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And it's not the death. That was the easy part of the whole thing. He just gave up the ghost, the Bible says. He sent him, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. That cup is judgment. It's not death. It's the sin of the world. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Jesus did not want to become that filthy sin. But he had to. Because if he didn't take that sin and just died to die, we wouldn't be saved. The prayer that he prays to his fathers to us, it's the sin that I took, not just the death. And when you say, behold, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. All that sin was put into one in that cup. You name it. It's there. If you could have a dictionary with all the sin. Just the sin. That's what's in this cup. Good sins, bad sins, all sin. And he cometh. And findeth them sleeping. And saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepeth thou? Couldst not thou watch one hour in prayer. Watch ye and pray. Lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready. But the flesh is weak. Again he went away. And prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned. He found them sleep again. For their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. <laughs> can't foot in the mouth. They're half asleep. They don't even know what to say. Even Peter can't have nothing to say in this one. Mark the words here. Peter had nothing to say here. And he cometh the third time. Saith unto. He's got no support but God. 
keeps coming back to the, the, the three faithful ones. And says unto them, sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed. Now Judas is Judas is damned. He is betrayed in the hands of the sinner. He's been paid. The soldiers are coming. Rise up. Now, I don't understand. He says, sleep on now and take your rest. And he tells them, get up. Rise up. I don't understand that. Let us go. Because he'll tell, he'll tell the disciples in, in Mark, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Paul speaks about the feet that, that had the gospel. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrays me is at hand. How much at hand? And immediately, while he yet spake, came Judas. One of the twelve, with him a great multitude to hear the word. Wow, Judas gathered a multitude, a whole band of people to go against Jesus. The, the priest grabbed a whole bunch of people. Do you know who else grabs a multitude against God? Satan. Before Revelation 20. At the end of the millennium, Satan finds a multitude of people to go against, and God just blasts him. With multitude with swords and staves. Staves were used to carry the instruments in the temple when they're in a wilderness journey. Staves were used for protection of the sheep. Staves was a weapon of war. From the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. The organization that God set up through Moses are standing there with their troops. Now going to arrest God and put him to death. And he that betrayed him had given them a token. Saying, whomsoever I shall kiss. That same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. There's a possibility that Judas did not know what was going to happen. Because he wants Jesus to be saved. He may be thinking, you know, they're just going to put him in jail and ship him off somewhere and get him out of the area. Because he wants him saved. I was going to say something. I forgot what I was going to say. As soon as he was come. Oh yeah. He gave him a kiss. There are no street lights. They are only using candles and whatever moon. And the first of the month is the new moon. For the Jewish calendar. I believe it's the new moon. When... Jonathan and David talk about sitting at the seat. At the, it's a new moon, the first of the month. If I'm correct on that. Well, if there's no moon, a new moon. There's no light from the moon. It's pitch dark. Why would Judas have to kiss Jesus? Well, they can't see him. And they don't want the, the troops to grab the wrong man. For heaven's sake, please don't grab Peter. You're going to start losing your ears. Don't haul John off because then we we'll have to go find this guy again. The one that the one that I kiss, that is him. You put your arms around him. You take him, but you treat him safely. As soon as he was come, he goes straightway to him and said, "Master, look at that again. Master, look at that again." In a book about Jesus, that's a servant calling him a master. And kissed him. 2 Samuel 20 verse 9. And they laid their hands on him. And took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword. And smote a servant of the high priest. And cut off his ear. Now remember Mark was a book about the activities of, Ju of Jesus. And not really the words. And yet Mark takes time to record the three prayers. And Mark has time to record the conversation between Jesus and Judas. And Mark doesn't even record the conversation with Jesus and Satan. In a lot of places where we were, Jesus said, you know, he just did this and then went somewhere else. 
didn't record the words, but Mark writes down and records the Last Supper. He records the, the three prayers in the garden. He records the words of Judas to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Are you come out as against a thief? With swords and with staves to take me? That must be some thief. They're using swords? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and he took me not. But the gospel, Jesus died according to the scriptures, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. Isaiah 53, verse 2 and 7. And they all forsook him and fled. Oh, there's a, there's a scripture fulfilled. The disciples ran. Thought you were going to stay and fight, Peter. And there followed him a certain young man, having a linen cloth about his naked body. And the young man laid on, and the young man laid hold on him. And he left the linen cloth. And fled from them naked. This is the only where it's recorded in Mark. And they led Jesus away to the high priest. And with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes, the Sanhedrin. The midnight oil, the kangaroo court, night court. They stayed awake for this one. And Peter following him after off, uh, far off. Even unto the palace of the high priest. Ooh, look at that. He got a palace. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. It's in the wrong place. The wrong fire. The chief priests and all the council sought for witnesses against Jesus to put him to death and found none. So they have no charge against Jesus, but they got him in court. And since we have no charge, for many bear false witness against him, but their witnesses agree not together. They'll, they're seeking another gospel. Matthew says they're seeking for people to lie about Jesus. Come on, we brought this guy in a courtroom. We ain't got no charges against him. Will somebody bring a charge against him so we can do our business and kill him? You talk about a mis mistreatment of justice, they don't even have a charge. Only thing we read about is Judas says, okay, I'll bring him to you. They're like, okay, okay, okay. They didn't even think about, wait a minute, we don't have a charge. What did he do was so wrong. And there arose certain and bare false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. And within three days I will build another made without hands. That's a false charge. And what Jesus did say, he was talking about him own self. His body to temple, he'll raise. They're, they brought before the Sanhedrin a lie, which is the truth. Guys, this man is going to be killed, and on the third day, he's coming out of that tomb. I don't care what you do to seal it, he's coming out. A liar prophesied of Jesus Christ in the courtroom. But neither so did the witnesses agree together. The high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answers thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? Nothing, they're liars. <laughs> you don't have to say nothing. They can't even agree amongst themselves. But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed God? Can't say God. Jews will not mention the name of God, reverence. And Jesus said, I am. On the day that God will take Israel out of the land of Exodus, the remembrance thereof, he proclaims, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, coming 
in the clouds of heaven. And Amos says, Woe well, unto you to desire the day of the Lord. What day is it? It'll be a, a cloudy day. He's referencing himself to the second advent. The high priest rent his clothes, saying, What need we any further witnesses? Yeah, you rent your clothes, Jesus will rent the, the veil. That high priest was not to rent his clothes if it was the priestly garments. And you can just see him sitting in his priestly garments up there. Look who I am. I love to go in long clothes. Then the high priest rent his clothes and said, What need we any further witnesses? What witnesses? You ain't got none. Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? All right, that's the charge. There's the final charge. He has professed himself to be God. That's the charge. And according to the Old Testament law, that is a serious charge. That is blasphemy. Problem. What's the problem? He is God. And they all condemn him to be guilty of death. But they can't do the death. Because if they were to do the death, they would break his bone. Because the death punishment of the Jews would be stoning. And the Bible says not a bone of him should be broken. Or else he would have been stoned that night, killed that night. There would be no more. Mark 15 and Mark 16. Because if, if they would have stoned him and broke his body, it would have broken the scriptures and there would be no gospel. And some began to spit on him. This is before the Romans got him. To cover his face and to buffet him. That means a punch. With a blow. And say unto him, prophesy. Tell us who did it, Jesus. Which one hit us? <laughs> Come on, tell us who did that one, Jesus. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, Art thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth? But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. Now he's trying to say, I don't understand your language. And he went out into the porch. The cock crew. He's trying to say, you know, I need to press one. I can't understand what you're saying. And a maid saw him again and began to say to them that stood by, This is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, What'd you say about that girl, Peter? You couldn't understand what she was saying? Come on, Jacob. What'd you say? What's your name? Is it Esau or is it Jacob? Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech, 1468, agreeth thereto. You got the language of a Galilean. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall. Have. Peter tried to get out with the language. And God returned the language. Okay, fine. What, what's your language tell you? But he began to curse and to swear, saying, those words are not recorded. I know not this man of whom ye speak. And the second time the cock crew. And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him. Before the cock crew twice. Thou should deny me three times. Some people don't know what that word means. Thrice means three. It's what just happened. And when he had thought thereof. He wept. The Bible says in another place he wept bitterly. So do you ever ask yourself why when you see on top of a barn a chicken with a weather vane? 
It has to do with Peter. And I forget the whole entire story, but if you were looking up that chicken on the weather vane, north, east, south, and west, you look it up in Google. It has to do something with Peter. And I used to know, he used to have that note, but I don't have it here. Maybe another gospel, but that's... But I'll tell you why. I'll tell you one thing, though. I'll tell you why Baptists love fried chicken. It was a chicken that, that turned Peter in and deceived him, so we try to get back every generation. 